Hey guys, how y'all doing? I'm here to give you guys a recap on the new chapter of Nanatsu no Taizai, or you could call it The Seven Deadly Sins, on chapter 275. Now, this chapter right here, my dear lord. <laughs> Dang, dude. I mean, there's so much that's revealed in this chapter, not to mention the way how it ended. It's gonna get really tense in the next chapter, and depending how it goes, it may not look very pretty, because, yeah. I'll get to that in just a moment. Let's just get this started. We have two that Gotha announces to, Ma to Mal that I'm the one that's responsible for everything, so you can destroy me, please. And Mal's like, so, you are Gotha, one of the Ten Commandments. It's you who did this, huh? And King's like, Gotha, do you have any idea what the hell you're saying? And Gotha explains to King that this is the best, and, be and, and Mal punches Gotha, or attacks him so, so hard that, that that he shatters like a theater right now and he even grabs Gother by the mouth and says you made me hate my brother Rudishell who I respected and loved you made me adore a filthy demon like Meliodas as my own as my own brother not only that you stole my grace and my justice these sins are unforgivable and he ends up blasting blasting Gother with arc possibly and ends up making him fly across the theater and lands lands on his body in a painful way. He therefore asks Gother like, go through the Ten Commandments. Before you, at before atoning for your sins with your own death, you must answer these questions I ask of you. Why would you do something like this? Why did it have to be me? Gother explains to Mal that what brought about the start of the Holy War was the destruction of the power balance between the demon and goddess clans. And that destruction was brought by Meliodas betraying the demons and taking out the goddess clan. And we all know why Meliodas betrayed the demon clan, which is love out of Elizabeth. And we see to it that Gotha also explains that Excel, the only way to correct the equilibrium was bringing a warrior with power enough to match Meliodas over from the goddess clan to the demons. And apparently that's Mel. Wow, dude. So... All this time, Mal was actually a match against Meli Otis when he was on the Demon Clan side, possibly, which is really, really shocking. Because think about it, we all know Meli Otis, the one that's cold and cruel and callous and ruthless. He was at equal terms of power against Mel. Mel himself, from the Gods Clan, was able to match Meli Otis in terms of power and strength, possibly even magic and spirit. I'm like, wow, dude. So you're saying that Meli Otis' equal was Mal the entire time? Whoa, dude. Not only that, we had to it that Gotha continues by saying, with the God's clan, with, with the God's clan, you and the Demon clan gaining Esterosa, the power balance both clans would be preserved. But having already been set into motion, the Holy War could not be stopped. So even when they tried to switch Mal to Esterosa to get to get him on the demon clan, that was not enough to stop the holy war. As certain victory was actually slipped through the fingers in order to prevent a long drawn out war with innumerable casualties and victims, the gods clan was forced to activate the coffin of everlasting darkness and brought the holy war to the to an end. So pretty much Gother explained like in order to like um, balance the powers between the demons and goddesses, they had to put Mel into a false memory ratification and put him on the demon clan side to balance that out. But that did not work out to end the holy war, however. And we have to, that the north for the holy war to end, the gods clan had to use the coffin of seal of darkness or something. And that brought the holy war to an end. But Mal is not taking any of that, and he ends up breaking the heart, the heart charm that King made for Gother. And as you guys might have realized right now, that Gother's right eye, who, which apparently is the Bala's eye in a certain way, it was actually plucked out after being damaged by um, by Mal. It's right next to Gother if you if you have not read the chapter carefully. Take a look at it again when Gother was trying to explain it to Mal why they had to choose Mal to like um, change everything. Okay, continuing on. After Gother's explanation, Mal says, So, you want to bring a holy war to the end and justify it with some kind of great cause like that and you had to put me through pain and misery, suffering, and humiliation. I should give, I should grant you one, one, one out of one thousandth of the suffering I had, I went through. But he realizes that Gother is a doll after Gother explains to him, and we had to. He grabs Gother and says, 
you shouldn't give me that. Don't mess with me. How am I supposed to get revenge on the doll who can't feel pain or misery? How, just how much are you going to plan to humiliate me? And we had to it. The king clashes against Mal. And Goth is like, no, king. I don't want you to get involved in this. I have no choice. I'm the one to blame. And nothing more. But king reminds Gother like, rule four of the seven of the seven rules of the seven deadly sins. When a fellow sin is in danger, all sins will work together with all their strength to help them. And we have to it that Mal says, So you're a friend of Gother's. Perfect. If his body can't feel pain, then I'll have to bring suffering to his heart. But Gother's like, Stop! Leave him alone! But we have to it that Esterosa doesn't listen. He says, If only for right now, I pray that someone you do have a heart to make suffer. And we have to, he tries to hit King, but King blocked it with his Guardian chasteful form and ends up trying to clash against Esther Rosa. But apparently, that did not work against him. And Esther Rosa launched, I mean, Mel, Mel, Mel. Oh my gosh, he's not, he's no longer Esther Rosa. Why am I saying that? Okay, Mel. Therefore, Mel, on the other hand, launched an attack known to be the Arrow of Salvation and hits King pretty badly and injures King critically. And we have to it that Mal explained that the Arrow of Salvation is a power to save the damned souls of the demon clan by painlessly leading them to their death. But if anyone other than the demon is stricken with it, they'll be inflicted with suffering that's quite difficult to endure. Oh, how tragic. We have to it that Gotha says, Stop! Break me instead! King has never committed no sin at all. And Mel's like, good, good, that's the reaction I'm looking for, you know? Otherwise, this wouldn't feel like revenge at all. But King, on the other hand, with this willpower and endurance to protect Gother, he ends up using his true spirit chasuble first form and launches, at, at, launches it at Mel. And we have to it that Mel is actually still okay, and he's actually blocking it with one hand alone. I'm like, wow, dude. So you're saying that Mal, the one who is able to like match Meliodas in terms of power, power, strength, magic, and spirit, this guy is the real deal. But we have to it that King's like, I'm the first fairy, I'm the fairy king of the forest. Don't make light of me. And we have to it that Tariel is like, whoa, dude, I can't believe what's happening between the fairy king boy and Mal. And we have to it that that Sadio explains to Tarmia that they need to step in. And we have to it, of course, like, um, we have to it that Tarmia's like, yeah, we gotta help out Mal right now. But Sadio's like, no, we're gonna have to help the seven deadly sins. And he goes like, are you stupid? Gother's the one responsible for fabricating of Mal into Esterosa. And, the, and that fairy king is trying to protect Gother. While Dedier goes to Elizabeth, Hawk comes out of the ground after Hawk comes out of the ground and sees Elizabeth right there. But nothing else is shown after that. And Tarmiel's like, you understand Mal is one of our precious brethren, right? And of course, Sariel's like, of course he is. But let me tell you something. Sariel also explains it in this way. Though he may have lost his grace of the sun, now that he has awakened to his, his four archangel self, he almost completely gained control of the power of the commandments that has previously caused him to go berserk and is mastering them, mastering the use of them. So, Sayo is pretty much explaining that Mel is mastering the three commandments that's within his body. But here's another thing. He therefore says, like, it is, a, it is very risky, but because Mel is one of the strongest of the four archangels, it's actually possible. But here's one thing. Every time... Every time he he's every time he's using that power right now, it's actually eating away at his soul and heart. And we have to it that Tar Taria Tarmiel is like, then what do we do? As his brethren, I can't fight against Mel. And Sario's like, exactly. We're going to save him as his brethren. And we see to it that Gother is trying to tell King, stop, please. Your sentiment is enough for me. If I alone die, that should be enough to satisfy him. So, King, King, just stop. I can't lose any more people than I, than than I already have. And we have to it that Gotha calls calls him an idiot and ends up hitting hitting Mal hitting hitting Mal away. And King's like, if you know how much it hurts to lose someone invaluable to you, then don't go saying that you're going to die so lightly. You understand that? Therefore, Gotha apologizes and King forgives him for that. But we see to it that King's Guardian is actually taking major damage right now, and he that 
And I was like, this is quite entertaining. Now I want the two of you to attack me together and show me what you got. We have two that says, nope, it's going to be the four of us. And he goes like, sorry on Tarmiel. As Mal looks at them in great discretion, knowing that they're going up against him. And the message ends off in a certain way, in order to protect a friend, in order to reclaim a friend. With each, the, which each of their own desires in their hearts, they, they confront Mal has begun to be consumed by darkness, etc. So their opponent is the strongest of the Archangel, which is known to be the Angel of Death, up against a foe with both light and darkness mixed within him. The four combine their powers to overcome him. So pretty much in a simple way of this chapter, if I'm going to have to explain it to you guys without a lot of detail that I've given you, Gother explains to Mel why they had to mess up his memories and end the Holy War. That's the reason for it. But of course, Mel was not going to give in to that kind of kind of garbage, and he ends up wanting to make Gother suffer. And that's when he, knowing that he can't feel pain or suffering, he decides to attack King, knowing that he is the friend of Gother. Of course, like um, we see to it that King is not giving up, and Saudi on Tarmio. Tarmio wants to actually help out Mal, but Saria on the other hand says, we're going to have to help the de seven deadly sins. Of course, Tarmio was against the idea, but Saria explains to Tarmio, like, you understand that the darkness is actually eating away, eating away Mal right now, right? He may be the four of the strongest archangels right now, able to control three of the commandments that he managed to absorb, but it's actually killing him right now, eating away his soul and heart. So we're going to have to find a way how to save him in a certain way. And that is true. His... Wings that used to be that used to be all white and pure is now half of it. Half of those wings just turned into darkness again. So that's why Sario says, "For now, let's save our brethren, and then we could talk about this later, etc." So it looks like to me that this chapter confirms that Mel himself who is the strongest of the four archangels, was able to match Meliodas head on in terms of strength, power, and spirit, and magic. But you know, um, I always wonder like, if these two actually clashed for real. If they did, I would like to know how the result became, either on stalemate or equal grounds or something. Because we had to that Gothur did tell Mal that... that his power was able to actually, like, match Meliodas's. So, I wonder, like, if these two actually fought each other at full strength with Meliodas being at his cold, ruthless self against Mel. I wonder how that's gonna be. Let's not forget the similarities that Mel has no, qu has no qualm or no guilt-killing demons, while Meliodas himself... When he's back, when he goes back to his old self, he has no qualm. He has no qualm killing anything that that threatens him or his demon clan. So you guys say, you I gotta say, if Mel is equal to Meliodas, I gotta see like um if these two actually clash, who would actually win? I hope maybe Nakaba Sensei could set that up later in the future, but who knows? But aside from that, let's get this thing on the road as well. Meliodas, the dark. The dark self of Meliodas is still absorbing the commandments right now. And I can only imagine how deadly he'll be with five commandments. But Mal himself able to control three of the commandments that he absorbed into his body. It's going to be crazy. We'll have to see. Until then, I will see you guys in my next video. So, I'm Alpha Zero, people. Have a good day. And I'll see you guys next time, right? Peace out. Bye-bye.